What's up, Wolfgang? We back with another one, baby. Giving all thanks and glory to the Most High, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, our Most High Father God. You already know how we do. You know how we kick it off. And today, I got a story time for y'all, baby. Let's get it. All right, man. So check it. This story right here, this is another job course story because I know a lot of people, they said they liked it, that one. So I'm going to do another job course story. I got a lot of job course stories. You feel me? But this one was another one about uh, a fight situation. It's about the time I almost got kicked out of job court. I almost got kicked out of job court like five times. You feel what I'm saying? Like I kept fucking up, not going to roll call, getting in fights, sneaking out, sneaking off the campus and shit. So, and I'm gonna tell you those stories too, but today I'm gonna talk about this one particular story where I almost got kicked out for basically almost getting into a fight. It was a gang fight, I guess you could say. You already know I told y'all last time how the nines and the fours, you know, didn't get along. We ain't like each other, whatever. So. It was always fighting between the nines and the fours, but you know, this one uh, particular day, a fight kicked off and the nines beat the fours ass that day, just being honest. So that night, the fours took revenge on the nines. And one of the guys who lived in the fours, he used to kick it in the nines every day because a lot of his OTs, brothers, were in the nines. And uh, he was from Chicago, a lot of niggas from Chicago, my city, you know, was living in the nines. So he would kick it in the nines all day. And then he would go back to his dorm in the fours and go to sleep. Well, this particular night, after the nines and the fours had they beef during the day, had they brawl, the nines pretty much did, did the fours bad that day to get revenge. The fours waited until we called them shot town. In job court, everybody who was from Chicago, name was Shot Town. If you were from Atlanta, your name was ATL. If you were from New York, they called you New York. South Carolina, South Cat. North Carolina, North Cat. So it was a thing where wherever you were from, that's what you were called. And uh, so this night, after the nines put it on the fours, they waited till nighttime and they caught Shot Town slipping. Shot Town walked back to the dorm. He, he was kicking it in the nines. He walked back to the fours. He took a shower and went to sleep. Well, while he was asleep, one of the guys in his uh, dorm decided to put a lock. They used to, you know, those combination locks. And they'll put their finger through the loop and they'll hold it and they'll punch you with it. That was, or they'll put the lock in the sock and they'll wrap around their hand and they'll hit you with it. That was, a lock was like the main weapon in Job Corps to use. So they decided to jump on Shot Town, but while he was asleep, the guy decided to put his finger through the loop and still on shot town while he was asleep with the lock so he hit him with the lock not with his fist and when he hit him with the lock the other homie next to him he had a lock in the sock and he was beating shot town with the lock so they jumped on shot town with the lock once they did that shit it went mayhem all over the campus it was a, a guaranteed mandatory ass whooping for everybody in the force on site we catch you we beat your ass that was off top. So I'm in the uh I'm in my bed. I was in my bed. I was reading. And some people may think it's weird to listen to music while you read, but for me, you know, I like smooth jazz. You know what I mean? So listening to smooth jazz at a low tone while I'm reading a good book, it's relaxing. So while I'm in my bed, I'm sitting in my bed and I was on the first floor and the nines, the nines were all one level. But there was no upstairs, downstairs. So I'm in my bed and one of the homies come knock on my window. So I get up, I go to the window like, yo, what's up? He like, hey bro, they just jumped on Shot Town. I'm like, what you mean? They're like over there in the fours, the homie who, who live in the fours. While he was asleep, they jumped on him. While he was asleep, they jumped on him, beat him with a lock, with a couple locks, you know, fucked him up. So I'm like, what? I'm like, hold up, bro. So I went, put my shoes on, put my fighting shit on, boom. So I hop out the window. So me and the homie, we heading over to the fours. So I'm like, so as we walking over there, I'm like, bro, this is me and you? Like, we're going against a whole army, nigga. Like, where the other homies at? He like, oh, they're around the corner. They waiting on you. So we turn around the corner, all the homies standing over there. Now we got homies from the nines. We got homies from Chicago. We got guys who live in the fours, the threes, the fives, who from Chicago, who finna ride. Because now the fours, they got, they got not only the nines on their ass, but they got the whole Chicago on their ass. So we deep. We running up over there. So... Everybody got their fighting shit on. And in, in Job Corps at Earl C, we had this thing where we'll take our shirts 
and we tie the shirts over our face to where it's just the eyes. And when we did that, it was kind of a thing where for, it was basically for security. Cause security would ride around in white vans and they would like look for any type of bullshit. So we had our shit covered so we couldn't be identified by security. But we rolling deep, boom, 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 boom. We get over to the forest, bro. And it's this hill. When you go to when you get to the forest, it's this big ass field, and it's this hill you gotta go over. And then it's the dorms. So as we walking through the field, we come over this hill. So as we going over the hill, as soon as we get to the top of the hill, they spot us. Now they out there just kicking it. They sitting on the bleachers. They sitting on the little table. They just out there chilling, talking, kicking it with the females or whatever. But as soon as they see us coming over this hill, all you seen was ass and elbows. Surprise, motherfucker. All of them took off running. They took off running. They ran inside the building. And they ran inside the building and they got security. And they had security standing at the door, holding the door. So we standing outside, they inside, and they behind security like, yeah, what's up? Yeah, what's up? So we like, bro, y'all talking all that, come outside. Come on, please. Come on. Come on over here. Come on in there. Let's show up. Y'all hide behind security. Come outside. And they laugh like, yeah, yeah, ha, ha. Like basically, we ain't catch them lacking. When I tell y'all, no cap, it was guys jumping in windows. No, I mean jumping, diving in windows, trying not to get that ass beat. So we like, all right, don't worry about it. We're gonna catch them or whatever. My ass being crazy how I used to be, I took the shirt off my face. I took the shirt off because I wanted them to see me. So I'm like, you know what it is. I catch any of you niggas on the campus, you know what it is. Y'all see me, you know what it is. So boom. We head back to the uh, campus because now they got all the white vans pulling up, all security pulling up. We head back to the uh, to the nines. We get back to the nines, so now we're making a plan. So we like, you know, and th this was daytime, broad daylight. So we were like, you know what? We're going to go back tonight. We're going to catch them lacking later on tonight when they least suspect it. And we're going to run up and it's going to be on. Later that night, the whole plan is to go over there. Nobody knows about this plan but everybody in the nines. It was a female she was hanging out in the nines because she dated one of the guys who lived in the nines. So she was over there all day hanging out with him. And they talking, they chilling, but we're not thinking anything of it because that's her boyfriend. Like, they're a couple. So we're like, okay, she always over here. Like, we ain't thinking nothing of it, but she lives in the falls. So we ain't thinking nothing of it. So later on that night come, everybody getting ready. We loaded up, getting ready to run up over there. No weapons. We had just our fists. We was going to bang out. And, uh, Oh, girl, she's standing over there with her man. And we're like, all right, bro. We're getting ready to ride out, bro. So the homie like, all right, bet. So the homie coming over. But his girl on her phone. Like, you know what I'm saying? But we ain't thinking of nothing of it because, you know, a person on their phone, that's normal. Like, everybody just be glued to their phone nowadays. So we weren't thinking shit of it. But if I was thinking at that time, I should have put two and two together. But anyway... So we like, bro, we got to split up and we got to go over there in groups because if we go all together, security going to see us and they going to know something up. So we got to split up in little groups. So we split up into three different groups. And one went through the right side, one went through the middle, and one went through the left side. I was in the group that went through the middle. If you know anything about uh, Earl C. Clements Job Corps, the threes is like in the middle in between the fours and the nines. So we walked directly through the threes. And the other two sections walked around. And we was gonna meet up at the field. Cause remember I told you it's a field and then it's the hill to get to the falls. So we all gonna meet up in the field. So we get there, we get to the field and we waiting on the homies. But I'm looking to my right and I see the homies is a distance. I'm looking to my left, I see the homies is a distance. So I'm like, damn, it's gonna take these niggas a while to get, up, get over here to us. You feel me? So I'm like, shit. We gotta wait for the homies because we're going up against a whole dormitory. You feel what I'm saying? But as we sitting there waiting, one of the uh, cats from the falls peeped us. So we like, bro, we gotta go now. We gotta go now. We can't even wait for the homies because he gonna throw the shit off the mission. So we say, you know what, fuck it. So we let the, the homies know like, yo, come on. We finna go ahead. So as we running up this hill, about to go over the hill to attack these niggas, we get to the top of the hill and as we get to the top, they're running over. This is where we hold them. So they like mean us. 
when I tell you it was their whole dormitory. The females, the males, they had sticks, they had bricks, they had scissors, they had all kind of shit. And they running towards us. So we on a hill. Now anybody know if you're on a hill and somebody's coming at you on a hill, if you don't get off of that hill, they're going to roll you. You're going to lose your balance. So as they coming up, we backing up off the hill because we got to get on level ground. So we back up off the hill. We back up off the hill. We get to the right where the hill starts. We get right there and we stop. And they run to us and we stop. And they run up to us and they stop. So now by this time, the homies on the right, the homies on the left all ran up. So now everybody's there. Our side versus their side. The nines versus the fours. We right there by the hill at a standoff. Now, we standing there because we're thinking in our head, like, hold on, common sense. We thinking we finna bang with the fist. But they bring in scissors, bricks, sticks, all these weapons. So I'm thinking, we thinking in our head, like, hold on. This is what we doing? Because if we, if we doing that, if we on that type of time, we could have came on that. But we came just on some fish shit. Y'all coming with some weapons. So we standing there and this whole lot of big ring going back and forth. And then it was two it was two guys in front of me. It was a whole line, but it was two guys I was beefing at. Two guys at the same time, like in their face beefing with them. So I'm beefing with them. Like, what up, bitch ass nigga? What up, what up, what up? Woo, woo. So one dude, he taps the other dude. The other dude, Pulls up his shirt. He had some scissors. Bro, as soon as I seen them scissors, I'm like, what? What, bitch nigga? So I, I'm, I'm just looking around to find something. I found a boulder, a big ass rock. I pick up the big ass boulder. I'm like, what, bitch? And as I'm running up to this nigga, I'm about to crack his shit. All of a sudden, I, all, I hear, put it down. And then I just feel him up for grab. I ain't know who it was. I just heard, put it down. And the motherfucker grabbed me. As soon as the motherfucker grabbed me, I'm t I get to tussling with him. So I drop the boulder. And I start tussling with this dude. And instant instantly I knew it was the security. Because the security, first of all, I knew what they looked like. You know, but they had on red shirts. And it was a one one security officer. He was a big bald head dude. And I know I knew him from the campus. So when we tussling and I turn around and I see the red shirt, I'm thinking security. But then when I see him, the bald head dude, I'm like, it's security. So now I'm like, oh shit. So I start to loosen up a little bit like, hey, hey, hey. Cause I ain't trying to tussle with you. I ain't trying to get kicked out of here. Job Corps, first of all, if you graduate, you get $1,600. At that, at that time, at that point in my life, it was rough. I needed that $1,600 bad. So I can't get kicked out of here. Second of all, I needed my diploma. I need to walk across that stage. It was just a pride thing for me to walk across that stage, get my GED. You know what I mean? People, some people try to belittle a GED, like it's not a, a, a official diploma, it is. It's an equivalency diploma. You feel what I'm saying? So just walking across that stage, getting that, I feel like was a big milestone in my life, and I wouldn't be, I wouldn't have been able to do that if I got kicked out. So I'm like, okay, let me not fight with the security because that's that shit gonna and that shit gonna move bad. You're not winning against security. You're not winning against the police. You're not winning. So when it comes to them telling your ass to put down the weapon, put down the weapon. And if you gotta talk, 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 but don't try to muscle up against them. This shit ain't gonna end good for you. So, but he was still trying to tussle. So I'm trying to lighten up, like, hey bro, I realize your security. Like, chill. He's still trying to tussle. So I'm like, fuck it then. So we tussling. Me and this big ass dude tussling. So he sends the other security officer over there, and now I'm tussling with two of them. And they back me up to the security van and they had the door open. So now I'm like leaning in the in the van and like they on. And he say, stop resisting, stop resisting. I'm like, bro, y'all got it, my nigga. Like, I already know what this is. Y'all got it. So they put me in the van. So once they put me in the van, he say, he put they put me in the van and he gets on his walkie-talkie. He's like, I got one, I got one. He's out of here. He's fucking out of here. He was, uh, he had a weapon in his hand. I told him to drop it. He didn't want to drop it. He was resisting. He's out of here. So I'm sitting in the back like, did I just fuck up? I fucked up. So I'm like, I'm gone. Cause by this time, this was like, this was probably like, this, I'm, I'm gonna say, this was probably like my fourth time 
getting in trouble and going to the superintendent. This is like my fourth time going to the superintendent. But this is how I played it. Like I said, that shit is over with now. Nobody got hurt. It was not a fight. The fight didn't even happen. You feel me? It was just a whole bunch of jaw jacking going back and forth or whatever. And things could have happened, but it didn't. So that shit is done. That shit is over. That shit was over 10 years ago. Uh, but what I can say is that day when they took me to the superintendent office, in my mind, I'm like, I fucking cannot go home. And then you lose all assistance for the rest of your life if you get kicked out of a federal program. So I was like, bro, I ain't trying to fuck up the rest of my life over no over some shit that just happened in here temporary. So I'm trying to think in my head, what the fuck can I say to not get kicked out? And I couldn't think of shit. So we get to the superintendent office and in walks a black dude. The, the superintendent was a black dude, tall black dude. So he walk in with a suit on. So as soon as I seen him, I'm like, I already been written up like two or three times by this point. You get to your third write up, they're supposed to automatically kick you out. So I got three write ups. But this is my first time asking, actually seeing, seeing him in person. So I'm thinking, what here, brother? I'm like, this is going to be a piece of cake. He going to sit down be like, yo, what up, homie? You know what I'm saying? I'm like, bro, you know how shit be. You know what I'm saying? We out here, you know what I'm saying? Wooty, wooty, woo, right? He sit down and he's like, what the fuck happened? I wasn't supposed to go like that. No, 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 no. I'm like, what the fuck? I didn't expect that. He say, that's that's exactly what he said. That's exactly what he told. You feel what I'm saying? So when he say that, I'm thinking in my head like, okay, this is not about to be sweet. This is not about to be no, you know, are you a brother? So I'm gonna look out for you type situation. He said, what the fuck happened? So I'm like, shit. Well, to be honest with you, man, I was just walking, bro. I was just walking around the campus going for a run. I was going for a jog. You know what I mean? And then a whole lot of craziness was going on. I'm like, whoa, what's going on? Like, you know, I can't believe it. This is crazy. So I'm thinking in my head, like, man, you know, these guys are everywhere. And I'm like, man, what should I, what can I do to try to protect myself? So I just see a, a boulder and it was like the big boulder and I pick it up. I'm just trying to get out of the situation. And next thing I know, the security coming and tackling me. That's what happened. <laughs> bro, when I tell you, and mind you, man, I was 21 years old, bro. I was a kid still, bro. I was still immature. I was still stupid. I was still doing stupid shit. So, but, I mean, that was all I could think of at that time because I'm thinking like, damn, bro, I cannot get kicked out of here, bro. I can't get kicked out of here. And he was like, so you mean to tell me you were scared? Cap. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I should've got an Oscar. I should've got an Oscar that day. But, uh, so I'm like, bro. So I told him, I'm like, bro, I'm in the pre-military program. You could call my first sergeant. You could talk to him. Like, you know, I go for jogs. Like, you know, I, I don't really try to get in any type of trouble. I try to stay out of trouble. Cap. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the security, one of the other security guys, not the one that was, not the two guys that got me, but one of the other security guys, because it was a room full of security. The guy so says, are you that guy that I see jogging around the campus? I say, yeah. He say, oh yeah, he does. He runs around the campus. He tries to stay out of trouble. He doesn't get into any mischief. I, I do see him because, and when I do go jogging, which I did, it will always be a security van that will ride past me. So at this point, that guy said, oh yeah, I drive past him all the time when he's out there jogging. He has his headphones on. He's trying to, you know, stay out of trouble, stay to himself. And I'm like, it clicked in my head. I'm like, yeah, see what I'm saying? Even he know. Hey, man, at the end of the day, bro, like they say, everything happens for a reason. I feel like that happened for a reason. If that man did not drive past me as many times as he did and see me out there jogging every day, being on my workout shit, just to be on my workout shit. But that day when that shit popped off, what the shit was about to pop off, I wasn't jogging that day, you know what I mean? Like, uh, but like I said, nothing happened. Nobody got hurt that day. Nobody got hit with anything. You know, the security broke everything up before anything could happen. So yeah, man, I mean, Job Corps is a place that was built and was meant for you to go and, you know, get your education if you didn't have it. If you dropped out and got kicked out of school, you could go to Job Corps, finish uh, high school, 
education, get your diploma. It's a place for you to go to, you know, get your trade, get a trade in, you know, culinary arts, construction, truck driving, nursing. They got all different type of programs there. And Earl C. Clements, the one I was at, they had a pre-military program, which if you wanted to go to the military, especially the Army, you know, it was an Army military uh, uh, branch that was doing it. So if you wanted to go to the Army, they will prep you. And then once you graduate, they can send you right to the Army. And that's what I was going to do. That's what I wanted to do. That was the plan. I was supposed to go to the Army straight out of uh, Job Corps. But the only th reason why I didn't was because I was very homesick. You know, uh, I had my son at that time, so I was like, I got to go home and visit my family first, and then I can come back and do it. And he said, no. He's like, that's the only thing. That's the only catch. You cannot leave off this property. You have to stay here and leave straight from here and go to basic training. I was home. I was homesick. I was homesick as fuck. Because when you in Job Corps, it kind of feel like jail because you're not allowed to leave off that property. You're not allowed to leave off that, that perimeter. If you do, they can not only kick you out, but you get hit, get hit with a charge. So... You know, uh, I was too homesick, man. I really wanted to go to the Army. I, I did. I really did. That was just a story, bro, because I want to tell y'all out there, if you're about to go to Job Corps, if you're thinking about going to Job Corps, go with the right mindset and stay the fuck out of trouble. Stay out of trouble. And trouble in Job Corps is going to be hard to stay out of because a lot of times it's going to find you. A lot of times it's going to follow you. And at the end of the day, you have to do what you have to do to defend yourself, to protect yourself. You know what I mean? And just like everywhere else. You know, if a, if a threat arrives, if you call the police, they're not going to get there in time. By the time they get there, you're going to have your ass beaten already. At the end of the day, you have to protect yourself because that's what everybody, security, police, everybody, they have bulletproof vests and guns to protect themselves. Not to harm necessarily, not every one of them. Every one of them not out to harm somebody. So with that being the case, when you are living your daily life, a part of your responsibility to yourself is to protect yourself at the end of the day because nobody's going to protect you like you and that's a fact so if you plan on going to job corps go with a clean mind and go with a positive mind and try to stay out of trouble as much as possible and that's all i got to say on that but man i appreciate y'all kicking it with me one time man for this uh session bro you know what i mean i want to give y'all another vlog like i say if this is a vlog if it ain't a vlog whatever it's my vlog it's my kind of shit you know this is what i do this Maybe I'm a little different, you know what I mean? But, uh, you know, we're going to go on some adventures and shit like that in the future. You know what I mean? But right now, I still got to go get this shot. I've been hesitant to, to get it, but I think I'm going to get the Pfizer, the uh, shot, the vaccine and shit, man. Because, you know, I got some shows and shit coming up and I'm trying to move and groove. And I, I ain't comfortable really moving, you know, without it because there's it's too many motherfuckers out here with it. You feel what I'm saying? And I ain't trying to bring shit back to the crib. I already went through a 14 day quarantine and that shit was rough as fuck. So yeah, man, but thank y'all for rocking out with me. If this is your first time checking out my channel, I appreciate you. You see what it is, ODC ENT, baby. If you want some merch, I got merch, baby. I got Wolfgang merch. I got ODC merch, baby, ODC ENT. Hit me up. You can DM me, hit me in my inbox and I send that to you. You feel what I'm saying? You already see what it is. We looking nice out here. But until next time, baby, I love y'all. If you have not became a member, hit that like, hit that subscribe, become a part of this amazing Wolf Gang. If you're already part of the Wolf Gang, baby, you already know how we rocking, how we rolling, how we creeping, how we sliding, baby. I love all y'all. Till next time. Wolf Gang.